Hey there, YouTube. Section 333 here. Hanging out in the backyard. Um, smoking the uh, Paul Winslow. Right? Which I wish you could see the. Uh, I don't think the camera actually does it justice. The grains on this pipe are absolutely stunning. It's. Uh, all the way around uh, the grains on this are just wow they really pop and if you're on this side of the sunlight that you really would uh, see it um but smoking my paul winslow on a friday afternoon first week of december oh. and i'm smoking again the syrian super balkan which the more and more I smoke this, the more I actually like this blend too. And I like it from the get-go. It's uh, quickly developing into a favorite, and uh, as, as I knew it would. Pardon me, Just drinking a little tea. Yeah. Um, got the uh, fire picked on. Oops, I just covered you with my thumb, sorry. So I got the fire pit going. Well, two stick fire this time, not a one stick. Used my uh, Grand Spores Brux uh, Small Forest Axe, which um, people have said to me, oh, I think I picked that up on eBay for... I got a pretty decent price on that, actually, on eBay. But people have said to me, um, is an axe worth that much money? Um, yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, it depends how much outdoor work you do. As uh, a lot of people know, I am a very avid outdoorsman. And I enjoy being outdoors. I, not necessarily a survivalist or prepper or anything like that. But I do believe in self-reliance. And I do believe in having skills to survive outdoors. Um, I believe that we have to still be a part of nature and understand how nature works too. But I, like I said, I really, that's a, it's a great axe, and I do enjoy their products, uh, Grand Spores Brooks, and they have been worth it. They cut better than anything else I've ever used. That little small forest axe, which is not a splitter, actually splits wood better than a lot of large axes that you would get at, like, Home Depot, things like that. Uh, Fiskars, it makes some great products, too. Um, that are much more reasonable and uh, so you don't have to spend that kind of money on an axe to get a great axe in all honesty you just have to take the time to sharpen the blade on it in all honesty and uh, once you do that you, you'll probably be in good shape um, mm. this is such a good blend the, the sweetness and it's just unrivaled and I think the wife is starting to warm up to this particular blend now finally um, she has mentioned that she likes the smell of the campfire of the Latakia even my girls have said that they like the smell of it unsmoked <laughs> uh, so like so I guess like they were down in the basement looking for suitcases or something and they were in the corner where I happened to store quite a bit of my tobacco and they said what's that smell it smells fantastic and it was the Latakia from the I guess the tins are not airtight if you put them all in the same place I guess the concentration which makes me wonder should I be taking I, a lot of my tins are in these shoebox size plastic containers 
and I'm wondering if I should get more of these plastic containers and store more of my tobacco in those because I noticed that when I open one you really get a strong tobacco smell which makes me think that the tins are not airtight um, anybody please comment on that uh, if you've experienced anything similar to that yourselves um, if you think I should possibly store my tins in that manner um, I guess I should look up cellaring tobacco on on YouTube, right? Mm. So we got the holidays around. Well, Thanksgiving's already passed. I had to work Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a very good Thanksgiving. I made turkey the next day. But it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, this is, I highly recommend everybody try some of these Syrian tobacco blends. With the Syrian Lataki in them. I highly recommend it. Very good stuff. Mm. So, holidays are around the corner. Thanksgiving's just passed. And, uh, yeah, if anyone's wondering what to get, uh, the pipe lovers, any women happen to be watching this, or, or men who have a woman that's a pipe lover, or a man who has a man that's a pipe lover, I could care less. Um, but if, for the pipe lovers in your life, uh, please don't forget, you know, go to the, go to those pipe websites, find them something nice, a nice pipe, right, you know, it's, it's not a bad Christmas gift. I think every pipe lover would take a nice pipe. <laughs> you know, for a Christmas gift or a Hanukkah gift, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, the tobaccos are tougher, you know. Um, but you can't go wrong with a Savinelli or a good Peterson or a Paul Winslow or a Nero. You know, so. If anybody's watching that has a pipe lover in their family, you know, you might want to kind of hope my wife is watching this. Um, <laughs> I got the pooch wrapped up in my uh, blanket here. Well, not my blanket, my coat actually. Had some weird, weird weather this week. Um, yesterday was about 60 degrees almost. You could walk around with a, it's about 65 actually, at like 11 o'clock in the morning, you could have walked around town with a t-shirt on and no one would have looked at you sideways even, because it was relatively warm out. And I had friends in the south who would absolutely slap me in the head if I told them 65 was warm. Uh, but when you live up here, 65 is warm. So, around 2.30 in the afternoon, it got icy cold. I mean, it got very dark out, and then, like, I mean, icy, icy cold it got. And, uh, just, wow. And, whew, couldn't get over that. And then, later in the evening, we drove into the city. It was our youngest daughter's birthday. So, yeah, later in the evening, we drove into the city, and wouldn't you know, this is nice. It was almost warm again. I was like, are you joking with me at this point? <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't complain when it's warm out. Fortunately, I don't mind the cold weather so much either. But I do have to be around everyone else around me who complains. Um, that gets to me. Other people complaining. <laughs>
tell you one thing too about this pipe because the bowl is it's a large bowl but not a huge bowl um, it actually looks bigger than it really is the bowl but the walls are very thick on this pipe and it, it so it never really heats up too much um, And there's almost no gurgle. There is no gurgle in this pipe. I've never had any gurgling at all, actually. Which I can't say of every Savinelli. Even with my, um, and I smoke my Savinelli's with the balsa wood filters. Sometimes you get a, every now and then you get gurgling. Depending on how wet your tobacco is when you put it in. So that, for those pipes, I tend to let it dry out for about 30 minutes before I pack the pipe. Oh. And I won't smoke flakes in those because I think the flakes take longer to dry, in my opinion. Maybe if I rub them out first and then wait it, I'll try that next time. Mm. If there's any blends out there you guys are into, please let me know. And uh, almost up to 100 subscribers. Hey. I will do a giveaway probably when I get to a hundred. Um, I have a feeling it will be a corn cob pipe since I have so many. Because um, uh, I think that's one of the reasons why I've upped my subscribers. Somebody saw something about one of my, and I do keep a lot of corn cob pipes on hand. And uh, I even, I bought a bag of actual smokable seconds even. Uh, and the reason why is if I have a friends over, I will give them a pipe if they want to join me with a pipe. If they don't want to smoke a cigar or something, they're like, oh. A lot of my friends smoke cigars. I think the cigars, they take too long to smoke. Um, not, sometimes they dry my mouth out too much, too. And so I prefer the pipe. It's a shorter smoke. I feel like it's a sweeter smoke in many respects. Even the cigarette blends, I think, are uh, nicer than most of the pipe, most of the cigars out there. Um, I do like some cigars. I, I don't mind cigars. But you really have to care for the humidors and things like that. You have to watch your temperatures and things like that and your uh, humidification. Whereas the pipe, you want things on the drier side. You want... Um, you, you have to care for mostly the pipe, not so much the tobacco, I think. And um, if, if you have a good um, humidification system or a button humidifier and some mason jars, you can take care of your pipe tobacco, <laughs> you know. If it gets too dry, drop a button humidifier in it. It's good to go in like an hour, you know. <laughs> if it's not, you don't keep the humidifier in it. You know, you want it on the drier side. So, whereas you want, a cigar has to be just right, evidently. Um, but if you have a buddy that likes to smoke cigars, and a lot of my buddies do, I do keep cigars on hand for them. But sometimes they're like, oh, what are you smoking in the pipe? That smells good. Or, oh, do you have another pipe? I'll try a pipe with you. So I have corn cobs on the side, and I give them those. So, I probably will not give away a smokable second, because I think a subscriber should get an actual Missouri Meerschaum corn cob pipe. So, I think that is what I will do. I will, when I get to 100 subscribers, I will give away a Missouri Meerschaum corn cob pipe. And I'll pick a random subscriber, actually, for that. Um... I think that'd be cool, right? And, uh, yeah. 100 subscribers, that's fun, right? But, uh, like I said, I hope everybody's enjoying this crazy weather. I hope it's not too cold where you are, or if you like the cold, I hope it is cold where you are. If that's what you like, you know? It's, uh, It's a good week. I got some family coming in from out of town. 
I'm gonna go see them later tonight. Looking forward to doing that. And uh, wife should be home from work in a couple hours. Looking forward to seeing her. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking about survival before, and uh, you know, being prepared for certain situations. That's not just like one of these things that like, oh, I watched some YouTube videos or something like that, and, or I watched Doomsday Preppers or something. You know, we kind of lived it out here in New York for a little while when uh, Hurricane Sandy blew through, particularly here on Long Island. There was a lot of damage to property, as there was along up and down the East Coast and many of the coastal states. There was a lot of damage. And uh, it wasn't just exclusive to us here in New York and on Long Island, but one of the things about living on Long Island is we were isolated. Um, tankers could not get through to deliver gas um, because the boats could not come in through the ports to deliver gas. So there was a gas shortage for a couple of weeks. We were in this household and the surrounding community, we were without power for 19 days. Um, my elderly neighbors um, their children came and got them and took them to the city where they live, um, where they had power. Um, you know, these are things you have to consider. There were people in Long Beach who were elderly and could not get the things they needed. They couldn't get food um, because they were elderly and they lived in buildings that had elevators and they had no power. Um, so they couldn't manage the stairs, you know, five and six and ten flights of stairs, things like that. So food had to be delivered to them. Medical care had to be delivered to them. Uh, you, you know, it was it was a trying time for for the, this area uh, of the world, as it was for, like I said, it wasn't exclusive to just here you know, on Long Island. It was up and down the East Coast for the most part. Um, but the gasoline was an issue because we're so isolated, because we're on an island. Um, you don't realize you're on the island until something like that happens. Uh, I remember going to get gas in the middle of the night. And, um, it wasn't even from, from my car because I was traveling back and forth to work. And that was it. That was the only place I would go. I would go to work. I'd come home from work. My wife was... Um, because we didn't have hot water, she would either go to her brother's and take a shower um, or go to her mother's and take a shower. When finally I said, listen, your mom and your brother both have heat. Your mother is closer to our work than you are. Um, so then we are here. So I said, why don't you stay at your mom's, take the dog with you, stay at your mother's, and I think you'll be all right as far as the, you know, the showering and food and things like that. And of course, everybody was like, oh, you know, I'll stay here with the house and uh, you know, make sure the looters aren't having a good time. And, uh, and yes, there were homes broken into. Uh, people had their generators stolen and they would leave lawnmowers behind, running lawnmowers behind, so you wouldn't know that your generator was stolen. Um, it's like, oh, I hear the generator running all night, you know, and <laughs> it ran all night. No, it was a lawnmower. So people were stealing other people's generators out here. It was pretty bad. Um, and there was fights on the lines for the gas. Like I said, I was going out for gas at 2, 3 in the morning. And I remember seeing people almost at fisticuffs over gasoline. Um, you know, and, you know, like I said, I was going for gas at 2, 3 in the morning. I'd go fill up my car, then I'd go fill up the wife's car, you know. And uh, I remember telling her, though, the only go we... And she, she got to the point where she was about to run out of gas, actually. <clears throat> and um, and she came to me and she's like, Oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I'm about to run out of gas. And I took her car into the garage and I put five gallons of gas in it. She's like, where did you have five gallons of gasoline? And I said, you know, I keep two and a half gallon tanks, you know, out in the backyard.
and that, and that little thing that, you know, it said, I told you it wasn't for, for seat cushions for our furniture. <laughs> I store the gasoline out there. It's on the other side of the yard, but, you know, I put the gas stabilizer and so you can store it for long periods of time in it. You know, I use the filters and things like that so you can filter it into the car so it doesn't mess up your car. Um, but she said, wow, that was actually, I'm glad you thought of that. And I really didn't. My father thought of it back in the 70s when there was gas shortages and gas lines. <laughs> so he always bought extra gas and stored extra gas at the, in our backyard in, a, in the same style container. And uh, It's just how life was back then, you know? But I felt it was appropriate that we did the same thing here. You know, I went to the supermarket. There was no food on our shelves at the supermarkets. They were just stripped bare. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, people are fighting like this over gasoline. What are they going to do when there's no grape, you know, over the last bag of grapes in the supermarket? Probably get pretty worse, you know. So I said, you know what, It's you're probably better off just not putting yourself into that position where you need to do that, um, where something like that becomes disruptive, has a burden. So I keep batteries, and I'm, like I said, I like to be resourceful and be okay with the outdoors and things like that. You know, my wife's like, how did you stay in that house for 19 days? And after spending so much time outdoors, I said, are you kidding me? This was like camping with a house instead of a tent. <laughs> It was the easiest thing I've ever done. <laughs> but, yeah, that's just, you know, there's my anecdotal story for the, for the day. All right. I hope everybody enjoys this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Definitely try and get yourself some of this tobacco. The Syrian Super Bowl. And the Three Oak Syrian is very good, too. I'm going to do a video on that, so... And this stuff called Yendige, um also has the Latakia in it. And I highly recommend that one as well. All right. Have a good weekend, everyone. And like I said, you know, if I don't see you, you have a safe and happy holidays. All right. Bye-bye. God bless.